Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Thompson Lathe Tools. Welcome to a new level of professional wood turning tools. Made by a wood turner for wood turners. Well, I went over to the bandsaw and cut off the ends of the blanks. So you can see now our tubes fit in nicely like so. Um, one thing, before you can actually glue these in, they recommend, highly recommend, that you sand up the metal on here. This is brass tubing and you want to get it scratched up. So when you use your two-part epoxy, it has some tooth that grabs into the scratches and grabs into the wood, right? Well, you can do that by hand or you can do the lazy man's way and do it on the lathe. And this will actually introduce us to how we're gonna turn this in a minute. This is called pin mandrel. And I like this one because it's adjustable. I can loosen these nuts and this slides in and out and I can make it any length I want. It has a Morse two taper on it. So it fits right into my headstock like so. And then with the kit, when you buy this, you need to buy the bushings that come with it because the bushings hold the tubes on. Watch how this fits over there. See, it fits just like that. And then this one comes up behind it and fits on there, so now that's solid. So then you take this nut and put it on here and just gently tighten that down. And then on this end, there's a little dimple and that dimple receives the tip of your live center like so. So you just screw that in just lightly. You don't wanna put a lot of pressure on there because it'll bend this. And then you just turn your lathe on and take your sandpaper and very efficiently put scratches on there. <laughs> and if you're making 15 or 20 of these at one time, this is a big time saver. And I'm not sanding back and forth, I'm just pushing straight in. And you can see the marks I made. So the glue, the epoxy will have a lot of places to grab onto when this is inside the piece of wood. I am doing a little prep here. I am putting some tape just on the inside of the tube because when we use the two-part epoxy, if it gets inside the tube, the kit won't fit together well and you'll have problems. So people have, have seen some comments on the internet where they're going, this doesn't fit. Well, if the epoxy gets in there, it bumps out the whole thing and it, it'll never work. So they recommended something like Play-Doh to do it, but I kind of wanted to go with tape. I figured it'd be easier as I'm <laughs> trying to tear a piece of masking tape and it won't tear. Uh, remember I marked uh, the top parts of the tube because I want to go this way and try to match the grain as best as I can. So anyway, I'm gonna insert tubes in this way and keep them up on here. And we are gonna use a two-part epoxy. Got my little Dixie cup here. Get this loaded up to go. You want equal amounts. This one has a uh, five-minute working time. It's called five-minute epoxy, but it takes an hour to set up. So we gotta wait a little bit once this is done. Hope you can hang with us. <laughs> and I'm just gonna mix it up here. Don't ask what that is. My wife works in the medical field and I gets all sorts of interesting things, but it mixes epoxy really, really, really well. Now, with our tube sanded, we have all that grip, right? So we're gonna come on here and we're just gonna start slathering this on. We wanna make sure we get right up to the edge because there's an important cut you have to make when this is on the lathe. And if you don't have this glued right to the edge, your blank could shatter. And I wanna put a lot on here because there's a little bit of a wiggle in there with that being a seven eighth inch hole. You can't avoid that. Coca Bolo is really nice about not doing that, uh, but softer woods like maple, they might actually uh, hollow, wallow out a little bit, so this will rattle around. Now I'm just sliding this in, and I'm spinning it, as you can see, so I'm trying to get glue all over. So now I've got glue all the way up to the edge, so I'm gonna put that back in there, and I'm gonna set it to the side. So we'll do the second one here, and get it glued up. And like I said, this is five minute working time so it'll harden up really really fast one thing i noticed too is it heats up also so make sure that uh, you don't throw any paper towels or anything like that into something that might combust because if you clean up with it the paper towel gets hot i'm amazed at that that must be the chemical reaction making this glue up okay that looks weird but you know what i'm doing anyway so we're gonna let that set up right there and i gotta kill about an hour
I got my disc sander out and I'm making sure that my little, uh, what do you call this thing? <laughs> my, yeah, uh, there's a name for that. And I'm drawing a blank right now. I need more coffee. Anyway, uh, <laughs> try to make sure the slide, make sure that it is uh, parallel, perpendicular, whatever. So I have a square edge here, a right angle, because <laughs> after getting through all that, uh, normally when you do pin uh, blanks, uh, you have a barrel trimmer, which is this little thing that goes down this tube and then our cutting edge is right here. And the reason for, the, for that is, is it goes in the tube and it spins and it makes, it cleans up the brass right there and also makes sure this is perfectly flat. So when you push the pin parts together, there's no gaps. Well, obviously that's not gonna work, right? <laughs> it just flies right through. So what they recommend is that you set up a sanding system to where you can do a right angle uh, grab on that. And I need to hang on, I'm gonna run over here and turn this on. You can see I have a very extensive shop it with really uh, fancy ways of turning on and off my air systems. <laughs> so I have my uh, dust collector. It's actually in a little building off to the next side. You can hear it running now because this will make a lot of dust and Coca Bolo makes heck of a dust cloud. But anyway, we're going to take this and now that we're perfectly straight, just bring this up here and just bump it into the wood a couple times and rotate it. And I found out by rotating it, I wind up with a pretty even face on there. And so you can actually see the brass is shiny now, so I've gone far enough on that. And like I was saying earlier, the length of this kit doesn't matter that much. So if you make the tubes a little shorter, it's okay because it doesn't have any internal mechanisms which uh, are critical as far as the length of the tube. So we'll get that in there. Cocoa bowl is fairly oily, so it'll clog up your sanding disc. There we go. And you can still see I have the tape in there. Well, now you can pull all the tape out and you'll have a nice clean tube in there and not have to worry about any epoxy being in the tube. And I did find out one trick. If that won't come out, where have I got it over here? Whoops. I have some dental picks. They're very handy to have hanging around your shop. <laughs> there we go. So you can use a dental pick, get in there and just grab that and get a lip going and pull out the rest of the tape. So I'm gonna do the other blank. And then finally, I promise you, we're gonna start turning. Now I've got my first blank mounted on the lathe and the bushings have inserted into the tubing. One thing, when you sand this and go to the drill press, oops, I forgot to take tape out of this one. You're gonna wind up with a burr on the inside. So take something like a hard piece of steel like your awl, and this is just called deburring. So it moves that lip of burr back so then the bushings can go in. And also when you assemble the kit, everything will squeeze into there really nicely. So. This is an easy turn. I mean, <laughs> there's not a lot. I'm sorry. Um, I've already got this set up on here. I've got my tool wrist parallel with the bed of the lathe. And all I want to do, and I'm taking, this is a cool tool. This is a, uh, I think it's a Mark St. Ledger tool from Thompson Lathe Tools. And it's his roughing gouge design. And I like it for doing small turnings because it's really easy to use on pins. Anyway, I'm using my finger as a depth gauge. Start to cut, and then it's going to move my body to the side. Come back. Send it to push the tool in just a little further and come back again. You want to take your time on this because if you take off a big, big piece of wood, you might actually take a chunk of wood, which would go all the way down to the brass tubing, and that wouldn't be good because you'd have to start over. Now, not to say that I've had to start over in the past, but if you do, don't throw the tube away. Just go ahead and turn all the wood off the tube and then get another piece of wood and glue it on. Not saying I've done that. Maybe I've done that. Anyway, I want to get really close to the bushings. The nice thing or interesting thing about the bushings is this edge is the height of the brass or the uh, connectors that go on the outside. So if you turn your wood down to this part of the bushing, you're the right diameter so everything fits up nice and tight. If you don't turn it to that height, the problem is you'll have a bump between the tube and the, uh, the, the connectors, uh, the what would you call it? The pretty parts go onto this. So you want it to be smooth, you want it to feel good. So what I do is I will turn this just a little bit proud. So in other words, it will be a little bit above the bushing still. I can feel a little bump, just a slight one, and then I'll sand it down to that. But one thing that's really important about this design is, as opposed to a pin where you might curve this, I want this to be perfectly straight across because I'm gonna have to make a very critical cut here in a minute once I've sanded and it's gonna expose part of the tubing. And if I don't have this perfectly straight across, then I won't have a good match up with the hardware. That's what I wanted to say earlier. 
of the kit. So we're just about there. That feels pretty good. So I'm gonna start sanding from this point. Now one last check I wanna do before I start sanding is to put a straight edge up here and then it'll tell me if I'm perfectly straight across. That's the last check you wanna do. And then I'm gonna start with my Abernet and you can keep the speed up fairly high on this because it's a small diameter. And I'm just gonna then start with my 80 grit, get rid of any marks that are on there. This is Coca Bolo, so it will clog up a bit, but with Abernet, you can just knock it out and it doesn't clog up. So, I almost have that flush, but I want to stay a little bit high yet. And the grit I like to use to get this flush is 220 because it takes off so little wood, I make sure that I don't overshoot my marks. So, I'm going to work my way through, believe it or not, up to 12,000 grit because this is Coca Bolo and it takes a beautiful polish and shine from sandpaper. So anyway, once I get that done, I gotta, I'll show you the critical cut that we have to make. Now making a mark for the critical cut, as this is different than any pin kit I ever use since it's a scar kit, it's different obviously. But one of the things is, I'll show it here, is you can see on this tubing there's an inset that goes down in there and that's 3 16 of an inch or a little bit more than that. You actually have to cut down to the brass tubing <laughs> uh, 3 16 of an inch so then this will slide onto the brass tubing. And when the first time, I'll admit to this, when I did this, I'm going to use a sharpie here to kind of mark that up a little more so I know what I'm doing. Um, the first time I did this, I blew up the blank because I grabbed my parting tool and went in there and boom. Well this wood right now is probably 1 16th of an inch thick and so that was not a smart move. So what I figured out was is you get your skew, you lay it with the long point down and then I'm going to simply bring the tip into that line and raise the handle and it cuts. I'm going to come over to this side and cut out a little bit more. I'm just going to go down so I can feel the brass and I think I'm there. So you don't want to go real deep because you can actually cut through the brass with that tube. Ah, And the next tool I'm going to use is my 1 16th inch parting tool so it's tiny enough to get in there. Now one thing about bushings is they're softer than the high speed steel you're using on your tool so if you get into them it's not going to hurt your tool. But now I can very gently go down until I expose the brass. There we go. And again make sure you don't take off a lot of brass when you do this. Now you can finish the pin first and do this but what I don't want to do is have a finish on here and then cut in there and ruin the finish. So we're going to do the finish next and it's going to be a fun one. Now I'm ready for surgery. This finish is a great finish to use, but it's really uh, tricky to use too. And we're going to use cyanoacrylate. This is the fast set thin stuff. So I've got gloves on. I've got my cheapest face shield here in case I get any splash. I'm hoping for the camera that it survives. <laughs> anyway, you want to turn the lathe on. And we're going to turn the speed down a little bit. We don't want to be flinging super glue all over the shop or all over us either. So I've got a piece of paper towel. It's folded up. I'm going to apply a liberal amount right here and just simply run it across a couple times. I'm smoothing it out and you can see how it's nice and glistening. The funny thing is, is you'll actually see smoke coming off of this occasionally because it heats up so much when it dries. It's some sort of chemical reaction going on. So this will get really warm. Now I've only waited a few seconds. That should be enough. So we'll put on another coat. Come back again. You see all the shine. And by the way, I don't know if you noticed how nice that Coca Bolo looked from being shined or polished up to 12,000 grit. So that's coat number two. So we're going to wait just a little bit longer on here. Don't use an accelerator, by the way, because uh, it'll pop it up. It'll get white. It'll look kind of ugly. So anyway, uh, I'm going to go for my last coat here. And then I'm going to let it spin for a minute or so to dry before we sand it. Now I gave it about a minute and the cyanoacrylate hardened up and I started off with 400 grit and now I'm working my way through 12,000 grit with micro mesh and it'll give a beautiful gloss. And I love that because with Coca Bolo it's an oily wood, it's very hard to take a finish and this has been one of the nicest finishes I found that I could put on small projects that last for a long time on this. Now all I have to do is take the other piece, mount it on the lathe and do the exact same thing, turn the same tenon and everything. And then we'll be ready to put the cigar holder together. Okay, I'm reading my instructions just to make sure. Uh, now everything presses together. This is the end right here, so it's going to fit into here. 
this is in the middle where everything joins together. One thing I did was, this is a pin press kit, and that's wide enough, but this isn't, and I don't want to mar the, the metal. So I'm going to put this blank of wood in here with a piece of chamois on there, center this up, and push, and it drives home. You don't want to crush it, but you want to put it in firmly enough that you don't wind up with any gaps. Then the next piece that goes on here, and I'm looking at my instructions, is this thread ring right here. And so it's going to be a tight fit because you've had glue and stuff on there and everything else. And if you cleaned it up right, it'll go on good. But I'm going to press fit that on. And I'm going to do the other ends, and then we'll be ready to show this thing off. Now this is the last piece. Press it in. There we go. That went good. One thing I want to tell you, before you put this piece in, screw it onto this piece, right? And then you'll notice that you get the threads down as far as they will go. There we go, tight in there. Then line up your piece of wood and just set it in here. So that way you make your grain line up. Pretty cool, huh? Anyway, that is how you make a great cigar holder. So until the next time on Wood Turning, keep turning. Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Thompson Lathe Tools. Welcome to a new level of professional wood turning tools. Made by a wood turner for wood turners.